Hi everybody, thank you very much for making our uh, crowdfunding thing a, a big success and in order to celebrate that I will now confuse you with a technical engineering video about ride heights basically. With a downforce car ride heights are very important for various reasons and in order to understand it a bit better we have to look at the aerodynamics and also at the suspension setup. And let's dive straight into the aerodynamics. Here we have my confusing complicated spreadsheet and we have a number of tables here which are also graphically uh, repre represented represented represent uh, here on the left showing us how various things of the aerodynamics change with ride heights so for example in the top one we have the total downforce and we have rear ride height here going from 0 to 80 millimeters and front right height going here from 0 to 40 millimeters so you can look at a combination so here at the rear, rear up in the sky at 80 millimeters and the front up in the sky at 40 we have 76 percent of the maximum downforce that this setup produces and somewhere in the optimal here is in this area here with the front right height pretty close to the ground at between 6 and 70 millimeters and the rear right height between 34 and, and 46 millimeters ish so the downforce changes quite a bit and you don't want to be completely in the wrong zone of this uh, of this chart just as important or probably almost even more so what you feel when you drive the car is the balance of the downforce uh, if the amount of downforce going to the front tires is much bigger than that going to the rear tires you might have oversteer and all sorts of scary situations Yet, it's unavoidable that the right height changes also affect the balance of the aerodynamics. So in this case, this is the percentage going to the front tires. You can see that if we fix the front right height, say at 11 millimeters, and then we start increasing the rear right height, the balance goes forward quite a bit. So we've added 80 millimeters of rear uh, right height and the balance has moved to the front 7%. So as you brake, for example, the nose dives and the rear comes up, it tends to move the balance of the arrow to the front, for example. And if overall ride heights are higher, for example, we have both the front here at 34 and the rear at 69 millimeters, then the balance moves to the back. So generally, lower ride heights move the balance to the front and increased rake, basically a higher rear than front ride height, also moves the arrow to the front. And these numbers aren't really random guesses, they are quite closely matched to real data from formula cars that uh, we've worked on, so this is quite uh, accurate. And managing this, this balance change is, is important, a lot of the time you just have to work with it, but it's uh, quite a thing. Um, suspension setup is important because we want to control these ride heights however part of the suspension is also the tires because well you've probably seen a tire uh, being broken off a car when it crashes and it starts to bounce uh, uh, around so it's sort of a spring in itself the tire and its spring rate is also uh, a big part because downforce pushes down on the car and also compresses the tire you've probably heard that the tire is a big part of the suspension in, in Formula 1 um, so how do we arrive at a car setup with sp uh, the springs and bump rubbers and, and that sort of thing uh, so to make it all work? Here we have a confusing chart and I will try to explain it, I hope I'll, uh, I'll manage. We uh, have a vertical line here um, with, well, let's go into the axis system first, so here horizontal axis between 0 and 12,000 we have the a load basically just a force and on the rear here it's the rear and left here is the front um, this is the downforce we get with a current wing setup of 24 clicks front wing 18 rear wing that means we have about 8000 newtons of downforce on the front axle and about 10000 newtons of downforce on the rear axle and the other very important thing here is this red line that goes here from 37 ish millimeters down to zero as the load increases this is the right height and on the rear as well 
and the right height is affected by now I hope I have enough breath to uh, to, to say that all it's affected by the regular springs the third springs if we have them and in this case uh, we do the bump rubbers which are both on the third spring and possibly also on the, the, the regular springs the tire expansion as tires expand as they rotate faster the tire spring rate which is a function of its pressure and I think that's about it so there are quite a few uh, parameters that change the ride height so how do I explain what happens here well displacement if you have a spring and you put a force on it it will displace so this blue line here are the regular corner springs of the car and with zero load we have zero displacement and if we put like 6000 newtons of load on the two front regular corner springs we get about 20 something millimeters of displacement and the third spring in this case we don't use a third spring we only use a bump rubber and in case this might help so this is a spring damper unit which you've probably uh, seen before and typically initially there is a bit of travel here there's free travel here well where just the coil spring is compressed and then at some point the bump rubber is hit and the bump rubber adds a sort of progressive resistance to further compression and here in the right uh, sketch here you can see the bump rubber is quite compressed and that creates a progressive stiffness of this uh, of this unit and here the, the green ones are the packers or the, the fillers or whatever you want to call that these are just hard metal or hard plastic uh, washers where you can change this gap here so how much compression is needed before the bump rubber is uh, becoming active and for the third spring which is a clever uh, device used in racing for a couple of decades now uh, the third spring only is activated when both say the front left and the front right tire move upwards from the downforce for example they move up into the into the car basically in that situation the third spring is active but in cornering for example the third spring does nothing so the third spring is an ideal downforce mechanism as you can have a soft corner spring basically and have reasonably soft roll characteristics with a very stiff third spring resisting the downforce uh, the third spring here is this green green it's not green this is gray line and you can see that the third spring is progressively providing less resistance as the load increases which is its, its progressive nature um, yes it is confusing however this right height thing let's just change a couple of things in the setup and you will see how the right height is affected so I mentioned the tires let's start with the tires currently we are at the ideal pressure of about 1.4 bars but what if you leave the pits and you start at say 100 kilopascals one bar you can see the right height drops here so it's where the right height intersects this vertical line of downforce that's where at 90 meters per second or 324 kilometers an hour on a flat straight we will be at a right height of about five millimeters and now that's out of the pits for example with cold tires you can imagine if you're at five millimeters down the straight if you start to break the nose will pitch down and you'll probably hit the ground with the the front of the plank might wear it down or might lose some grip on the front so up to the regular pressure we gain about four millimeters already just from the extra stiffness that the extra tire pressure creates in in the tire and another thing that's important the tire expands like when it the revolutions are really fast so it rotates very fast when you do like 300 kilometers an hour this spinning of the tire increases its radius which is uh, actually true there is uh, some data for it and this is a reasonable value but if we make it tiny so the tire doesn't expand a lot look at what happens now we are flat on the ground at this speed here the intersection is just about at zero so tire expansion even though it's like only five or six or seven millimeters is quite important because you are looking at millimeters in this uh, in this case so let's go back to normal value tire expansion plays a, a, a huge role in this as well 
other things that play a role, well, let's change the springs, the regular corner springs, the four springs you're used to changing. So now it's setting 5, 140,000 uh, newton per meter. Let's soften this up. And you see softening the springs also lowers the ride height. And stiffening them will increase the ride height, as you can see here. So lots of parameters to choose from. And this, this third spring here, which I'm using just the bump rubber in this case. Sometimes uh, people use a full spring damper unit on uh, the, the third spring, sometimes only a bump rubber with a damper. It's, it depends on how much space there is to build in, into the real car and what the designer uh, thinks is important. But in, in this case I'm only using a, a bump rubber and I'm changing here with the packer length, I'm changing the gap here I'm changing these green spacers, so with more of these green spacers here, the bump rubber will move closer to uh, the red sort of damper unit, and this gap here will become smaller, so there is less uh, damper travel required before the bump rubber becomes active. So that's what we control basically with the third element here, changing the packer length. So now there's, there is a gap of five millimeters before this third spring becomes active, this, this bump rubber. So you can see that it starts here at five millimeters and then only then it starts to come up with a counter force. So if I change this gap, make it larger, so the suspension moves more before this extra bump rubber is hit, will lower the right height again. So now the gap is one centimeter, you can see, 0 0.01 meters and then the bump rubber becomes active and we are at just about five millimeters but if we increase it again so it, it starts instantly look what happens there so now there is no gap the third spring bump rubber becomes active immediately and we are at over one centimeter uh, ride height now so just changing those those green spacers in uh, in the damper unit has a profound effect on on the ride height and on the the rear of the car as well we see the same thing uh, if we change the pressure of the tire to too low the ride height here will will drop back to normal and here as well we have the regular springs which we can change whoops we're on the ground now or we can stiffen them up or back to usual and we also have this gap here which is currently 20 millimeters for that extra bump rubber and we can change that to a smaller gap of one centimeter for example or no gap at all and every time we change these settings you can see that the ride height the intersection of the ride height and the vertical load is somewhere else so lots of parameters here change the the right height and it's every setup is different to some degree so if we change the arrow setup to a super high downforce so we are maximum wing settings here and we go back to the suspension you've seen well it doesn't make a huge difference but the arrow loads have gone to the right, they have gone up a bit, so we are probably going to end up at a couple of millimeters lower uh, a ride height because we are now using a higher downforce setup. But I was already at quite a high setup, let's go to the lowest possible arrow. Oh, that's not what I want to show you, this is not what I want to show you, this, yes. So now we went from 8000 to just over 6. And here we went from 10,000 just to just over 8. And if we look at 10,000 here, the right height would have been 1 centimeter, but we are only at 8,000, and then the right height is almost 2 centimeters. So changing the arrow uh, also changes the downforce, which changes the right height. So, um, yeah, I think it's confusing enough by now. So the, the, the things here are that influence the right height are all in, in this spreadsheet. And the beauty is, of course, knowing the right heights in before we start to drive we can already give you a or when we're testing we can create some baseline setups with spring rates and these these packer gaps uh, giving us a setup 
where we know that at the end of the straight, for example, we'll, we'll be at our target right height spread. We want 5 millimeters on the front and, and 5 on the rear, or whatever our targets is, we can uh, make sure we hit those targets with no trial and error, just by using the spreadsheet and uh, coming up with a good uh, setup. So, I think that's about it with uh, regarding uh, the downforce and, and the ride heights and the suspension setup and the tire influence. So there's a lot a lot going on and uh, well you're in uh, in good hands at Risa because we are on top of this and we'll make sure that all the suspension setup ranges make you able to get like a good setup with good ride heights uh, in all situations. So yep, thanks for watching and again thanks for all the the contribution to uh, our campaign and we'll do our best to uh, not disappoint you with some awesome cars in the near future. Bye bye.